In the beginning, it was just zero and a one, just bits of data. Over the past few decades, technology evolved and evolved. Today, computers and electronic devices for sensing, collecting, sharing, and analyzing information have become an integral part of our lives. In fact, we're now creating so much data in the form of emails, texts, instant messages, documents, pictures, videos, and social network interactions that, according to one study, the amount of digital information created and replicated in the world will grow to an almost inconceivable 35 trillion gigabytes. That's 35 with 21 zeros after it. We've become swamped with data. The result has been what some have termed a data deluge. Picture a stack of DVDs. Within the next decade, we will have created enough data to build a stack of DVDs that would reach halfway to the planet Mars. At UC San Diego, researchers recognize that hidden within this onrushing flow of data may be key answers to solve problems critical to science and society. Work on these problems is generally referred to as data-intensive research. The San Diego Supercomputer Center at UCSD is now a critical focal point for stemming the data deluge by enabling data-intensive research at UCSD and beyond. If computational science was considered the third paradigm of science, we've entered a new era, which some have called the fourth paradigm, for data-enabled science. This paradigm is emerging because it's easy to generate data. In fact, it's so easy that it's exceeding our capacity to store, manage, and analyze. And yet, many critical scientific problems can be solved only by harnessing this data. At SDSC, we've taken the lead here by architecting a new kind of supercomputer. And at the top of our list is the innovative and unique supercomputer, Gordon. What are data-intensive problems? Take, for example, researchers using data sequencers to help unlock mysteries of the human genome in hopes of creating targeted treatments of specific diseases for individuals, so-called personalized medicine. We're using Gordon really related to, I would say, genes and proteins. So in terms of genes, we're just absolutely awash in biological data. Right now, we have a situation where genetic information is actually doubling every five months. And that's at a time when it costs around $5,000 to actually produce a genome. Within the next three to five years, that will be the order of $50. That amount of data is just going to accelerate the market. What we've been doing with that data as well is we work at the protein level. Yes, we are integrating large amounts of data from electronic medical records, from genomic profiles of patients, from social networks and trying to understand why certain patients have more adverse events than others, whether this is genetic, what they are doing about it, and how to uh, develop patterns of disease progression and of disease transmission so we can better track safety of new medications and new medical devices. And we work with three-dimensional protein structures and we maintain a resource called the Protein Data Bank. And that currently has about 75,000 of these three-dimensional molecules. We can deliver that information 30 times faster than we could do before Gordon. Satellites observing the Earth are sending back large volumes of data aimed at detecting physical changes in the ocean, which scientists are trying to analyze for potential impact on weather and the planet's climate. We're standing here today at the oldest oceanographic institution in the world. For more than a century, we've been going to sea in ships to collect data. Today, however, we're making a massive change in the way that we collect data in the oceans by integrating data from permanent sensors in the oceans, sensors that'll be there for 25 or even 30 years into the future. The massive amounts of data that we do collect need to be analyzed on modern computers with rapid access. The analysis itself will allow us to predict droughts, rainfall, snow, and so on better throughout the world. There are few forces in nature that match the raw power of a major earthquake or the destruction and misery that often accompany it. At the Southern California Earthquake Center, based at the University of Southern California, researchers are using computer-generated animations of earthquake waves to understand the impact of major earthquakes in Southern California.
Other scientists are seeking answers to fundamental questions that have perplexed humanity since we first looked upward into the night sky. Astronomers continue to survey the outer reaches of the universe to learn more about its genesis and how galaxies and stars are formed. One of the things that's greatly changed astronomy in recent times is the advent of all sky surveys. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey generated more data in its initial startup than it had been amassed in all of astronomy beforehand. Coming soon, we'll have the LSST, which is going to outdo the Sloan every single night. These data sets are large and they need to be analyzed quickly and easily, and that's where things like Gordon come in. In the field I work in, computational astrophysics, we generate large simulations. We can be up to 500 terabytes for just a small part of it. We need the ability to easily analyze those and find the scientific results that motivated us to do them in the first place. Since opening its doors in 1985, SDSC has helped researchers solve major problems across multiple scientific disciplines, creating significant advances in the software, networking, and machinery that contribute to high-performance computing solutions to these problems. Our first supercomputer was a Cray XMP48, one of six such computers in the world. It had a peak speed of nearly a billion operations per second, a so-called gigaflop. Today, you can get that same kind of performance on an iPhone. Meanwhile, computer speeds have continued their dramatic advance in accordance with Moore's Law. Today's most powerful supercomputers are more than a million times faster and have the peak speed in excess of a petaflops. That's a one with 15 zeros after it. But just having such raw computational performance is not enough to handle the exponentially growing flood of data. Digital data from instruments is doubling every 18 months. The density of storage media has roughly kept pace, but what hasn't kept up for traditional supercomputers is the speed by which data is transferred from the computer's central processing unit to memory. When we look at a modern computer, we see that at the top of the machine is a very fast thing called a processor that can do like a billion operations per second or more. However, in accessing data, we see something that looks a lot like a pyramid, where every layer of the pyramid has greater capacity but is slower to access. So there's a very little bit of memory called registers which the processor can in fact access a billion times a second. But then there are further levels which hold more data called cache, memory, and disk. If the processor is mostly doing data access to disk, it's literally spending most of its time waiting for data to come back. The opportunity arose with Gordon to bring in a new technology called NAND flash. It's something that is nearly as capacious as disk, so it could be the size of terabytes, for example, but it is 10 to 100 times faster than spinning disk. The missing link that bridges the latency gap is a supersized version of a flash drive, familiar to many from their world of digital cameras and laptop computers. The system called Dash is relatively small by supercomputer standards, but it's been a very effective prototype for testing the new technologies that are going to be launched in Gordon. This includes not only flash memory, but it also includes virtual shared memory software, which allows user applications to aggregate the memory across multiple nodes of the supercomputer. NAND flash is an electronic device. It stores data somewhat like memory does by storing electrons, and it accesses that data by moving electrons. In some ways, the spinning disk of today is still the Stone Age device, this physically moving thing. And we have a vision of getting our data off of protons and moving it up to the fast electronic age where it can sit in the flash layer. Dash provided a learning experience for STSC experts, allowing them to draft a proposal to the National Science Foundation to build a much larger machine with even greater capabilities. Gordon. The NSF awarded SDSC a five-year, $20 million grant to build and operate Gordon. When fully operational, Gordon will feature 280 teraflops of total compute power, 64 terabytes of digital random access memory, 4 petabytes, that's 4 quadrillion bytes of disk storage, and 256 terabytes of flash memory. Gordon is a state-of-the-art supercomputer, unlike any other in the HPC community. Based on the third generation of the Apro Extreme X architecture, Gordon is built to be able to work on extremely large databases, operating at up to 100 times that of a traditional HPC cluster that utilizes spinning disk drives. This allows researchers to comb through extremely large databases and large amounts of information to be able to glean that single sliver of important information. Gordon is innovative from both a technical and collaboration perspective. Integrating cutting-edge technologies like Flash, 
VSMP and the 3D Taurus into an HPC system has been possible due to the willingness of the partners to move out of their comfort zone in order to do something that advances the state of the art in data intensive computing. It has been extremely rewarding to see the project team work through the range of technology and schedule challenges, all the while remaining focused on the goal of deploying a unique resource to the research community. As you can see, the scientific community is clearly excited about Gordon and its potential to help solve significant problems now facing science and society. I'm proud that the NSF has entrusted us to pioneer in this area. I'm proud of our partners who created Gordon, but I'm particularly proud of our dedicated staff who contributed their genius to this out-of-the-box solution for data-intensive problems, and also those who will be helping our users take advantage of it. It's a great winning team. SDSC, data to discovery.